Hello everyone and welcome to my walkthrough of Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge. Let's get this game started brand new. Two months have passed since Gruntilla the Witch was defeated by Banjo and Kazooie. After falling from her tower, Gruntilla was buried underground, where she remains, waiting for her sisters to rescue her until this very day. So this takes place two months after Banjo-Kazooie, basically. <laughs> I love their voices, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile... Klungo is busy pushing a rock. And failing. <laughs> His voice... And he appears to be working on something at a rather rapid pace. And there's Mumbo Jumbo spying on the ruckus. My god, that was fast! How did you build it that quickly? Maybe he had that prepared on the side and he just finished it now or something? I have no idea, but man. Oh, 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 oh. And now we have ourselves a game. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> His voice is good too. It's kind of a trademark of the Banjo Kazooie games, so, in that you read the text in their voice in your head, and you kind of visualize the words in the in that voice. Uh oh. Oh, poor Kazooie. Although I do wonder why is she not running? I mean. Guntilla's just there bragging. <laughs> She's practically distracting herself. I think Kazooie's speed would be able to outrun. Oh, whatever. <laughs> just do not question the game logic or the universal implode. I've taught you this before. Sounds good. Handsome young witch. Uh, let's see who we got. Oh, God, I shouldn't have done those fuzzy spores. I am tripping. Oh, okay, we're back to normal here. Actually, no, we're in the past. This is a new character. This ornery sounding mole is known as Bazai. I wonder how far back in the past we are, actually. The game never really clarifies that. Mimba Jimba. <laughs> yeah, Mumbo Jumbo was that shaman. Obviously. Yeah, we apparently forgot moves in our trip to the past. We pretty much only can use the D-pad to move and the A button to jump. Seriously, that's all you've got. <laughs> I don't under understand how you could forget the moves like that, but 
You do. And he wants some payment. So apparently the notes are the currency in this world. So yeah. D-pad, move, A button, jump. That's all you've got. <laughs> There's some vines over here. Nope, you can't climb them. Nope, not, not gonna happen. <laughs> because apparently bears forget how to climb when traveling back to the past. I'm just exploring this area. There's a beehive which has honeycombs that recover your health, but I can't even destroy it right now without any moves. <laughs> so I'm gonna collect a bunch of notes along the way to the molehill. Hey, there we go. That little critter off to the side is a Jinjo. No, not a Jinzo from you, you Yu-Gi-Oh players. <laughs> and collecting five of them gives you a Jiggy. Well, five of them each world. And we got ourselves a new move called the Pack Whack, which we can use to whack things with our backpack, obviously. And we're going to visit a few more locations here, of course. Yeah, sounds good. But one thing at a time, please, Bazai. This is a walkthrough. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't really get in. Oh, you can't actually get in there. <laughs> I thought you'd have to whack your way in there, but that's... Hmm. Why, why is there stuff around the Jinjo if it's not guarding the Jinjo? But yeah, you can whack these things, destroy them, and this one at the bottom contains a whiplash enemy! If you run into it, it causes damage. The life counter at the upper left corner indicates the life. You just see me lose one life, and that honeycomb recovers life. That was uh, good timing there. <laughs> He's gonna describe the different kinds of them. There's uh, one with two on it, that's how you can tell it's a uh, times two. It gives you two units of energy back. The question mark and exclamation ones, he doesn't really do an, a good job explaining. I should actually go back down to that other one just to show you which one I could possibly get from it. I don't know if this one's going to give me an exclamation point or a question mark one, though. Uh, it's an exclamation point. Press the A button when it's at the far right and it'll recover your health to that many, but be careful not to let it go all the way down to the bottom because it'll skip all the way there, and you might end up with one health instead. It's a, it's sort of like a mini-game of sorts. The question mark one is very similar to that. Wow. <laughs> the question mark one is very similar to that, except for the fact that you have to time it. It's moving randomly rather than in a linear pattern. And here's the Jinjo Oracle. Well, I'd like some information. Hmm, interesting. Mysterious indeed. <laughs> yeah, he's basically stuck as a statue there, and he gets the gossip from the other Jinjos that are around the world. Careful with breaking the fourth wall, though, because, you know, that could also break the universe. Just saying. Oh, poopers. Alright, let's go check that out. I don't think there's really much to show around here. Um, the game is pretty good, but it's got some perspective issues. Like, it looks like you could jump up there at first, but you can't really do so. <laughs> I'm probably gonna do that a lot during this walkthrough because I don't I'm not that familiar with the areas break that apart And you'll get a hollow honeycomb. I'll cover these later, but since this is a collection game You want to collect everything Everything it's gonna I'm gonna collect everything to OCD standards. I don't have enough to show you what they do, but once you get a certain amount of them, it changes depending on how many you need. You can extend your health. Like, you see you've only got four health at the upper left corner there. Well, you can extend that throughout the course of the game. And I'm just going to collect the notes around this area. And By the way, those uh, enemies that, are, that chase you down are known as uh, gruntlings. Those red enemies that go, and then come after you. Yeah, those things. I was very descriptive there. <laughs> and 
up, but here's another one of these. I already, uh, I already showed you the exclamation point one before. Anything over here? No, I'm just gonna hit this switch then with my pack whack. And let's go inside Jiggy Wiggy's temple. And let's collect our first Jiggy. Woo! Yeah, apparently the Jiggies are a powerful force, but we can't really use them for ourselves. We gotta bring them back here for some reason. <laughs> Oh, dang. Well, that just means we got a lot of stuff to collect. 60 of them, to be exact. And it's gonna be fun. Okay, you see the upper right corner there? It says one out of one. That tells you how many jiggies you need, and of course I've got just enough as the game set it up. Alright, let's go release that Jiggy Magic! Oh, wait, wait, actually, do you have anything else to say? Just for the heck of it? Just, oh no, I wanna, I wanna talk... I can't talk to you again? Oh, there we go. I was pressing the A button in front of you. <laughs> mm, obviously. Okay. Just wanted to see if he had anything different to say. A button! Ooh, gyroscopy! And that unlocks the first world! And do you have anything to say about me unlocking the first world? Uh, oh, you're just telling me about the counter at the upper right corner there. More jiggies we go! So, um, since I collected everything at Spiral Mountain that I would like to collect at this time period, I'm just going to move on to the next world. Well. Yeah, the, the Spiral Mountain is actually a world in on itself, even though it's like an overworld. Because there's notes and jiggies to collect here, just like any other world. So, this cliff farm right here is technically World 2. Anyway, let's see what Bazai has to give us this time. Woo! That sounds refreshing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta look for places that have bubbles, and those are the only places that you can dive down. There aren't that many places that have bubbles throughout the whole game, but it's still, you know, a necessity to dive down there to 100% everything. Hmm, there might be. Sounds good. Alright, let's collect the notes around this area. Oh, and there's the Jinjo Oracle of this world. Oh, that that guy with that was, I just killed there was a Gruntling. Anyway, chat time. Uh, grunt weeds we haven't seen yet. They are some flying weed-like enemies. It's a he says it's a cross between a Gruntling and a Whiplash. The Whiplashes were the uh, um, those things that you only have to run into to take damage, but they don't attack you directly. It's Kind of one of those sorts of enemies that are traps. If you don't remember what I was talking about before. And dive down here! With the R button. And yeah, these are the whiplashes. Alright. Underwater, you got an air gauge off to the left. Wait for it. Notice that you went low on air there? Well, your air gauge went down a little bit. If you go in these bubbles, you can recover your air. Anyway, I'm gonna collect the Jiggy and go back up to the surface. You can press the A button to swim up and down like this. Yeah, but you can't actually return to the surface just by pressing the A button alone. You have to press the R button. Alright, let's move on. And I think I'm gonna go off to the left here at the cliff farm. Lots of exploration to do. Split paths. Adventure. And new moves. <laughs> And oh yeah, we can learn how to climb all over again. <laughs> Sounds pretty easy. Still find it odd that Banjo has to relearn how to climb. I, mean, I think bears learn that like early in age just by learning that from their moms and stuff like that or something like that and they just follow suit. Um, these fences you can't jump over. Again, it's it's a thing of the game's perspective. <laughs> like you can tell 
when you're over here that you can't jump up there, right? But when you get closer to here, it makes it seem like that jump is more plausible. I mean, um, in terms of comparison, it's it's kind of hard to explain unless I have a better example. Uh, I'm gonna be looking for examples to show you, but yeah, it's, I'm kind of stuttering here because that, that was a terrible example and I flubbed it all up. There's another Jinjo grab it, of course. Get the notes, talk to this... Not jump on her. <laughs> oh no! So we gotta go down the slide and avoid the spikes! Banjo-Kazooie is known for their mini-games as well as their adventure-based gameplay. You can see the stuff coming on the left side of the screen before it comes to you, so you can kind of predict what's coming next based on that. It's kind of like seeing the next area in Tetris or something like that. And there we go. That was easy. And it should be. It's World 1. Jeez. <laughs> and that hole poops you back out at the bottom there. It's a little... There's holes like that all over the game that give you like shortcuts and stuff like that. And we get another Jiggy for our troubles. So let's go climb up there and grab it. Mm, go, 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 go. Not much more to climb to get our Jiggy prize. Yeah. And there's a little bit more I'm going to do here in the cliff farms. There's not really much more to show in this corner of the world. There's a Jiggy guarded by whiplashes. And that was kind of odd. I killed the middle one, but I was aiming for the left one somehow. And I think that's all I'm going to do in this intro part, so I hope to see you in the next part. <laughs> it's kind of an awkward end because, I, like, usually in my videos I have to do it like in sections, but since the worlds are large enough, I'm mean, gonna have to split worlds up in multiple parts, and that just feels really awkward. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when I continue the cliff farm.